time. The Lord be with you and also with you. I've just had the most awful morning. That's today, Thursday, because I went to renew my car license. I queued for just over six hours and then find, found that I had to pay uh, overdue penalties, whereas I'd understood that we would been given some leeway, but no. I was feeling rather sorry for myself until I read about Anthony, Earl of Shaftesbury, whom we're remembering in our Anglican calendar tomorrow, Friday, which of course is the day this recording goes out. So for you, it's today. That's a bit confusing. Anyway, I knew nothing about him. So I looked him up and I found a most fascinating story. And by the end, I realized that my troubles were pretty insignificant compared with other people's. And so I want to share something of what he accomplished with you today. The Earl of Shaftesbury was born in 1801 into an upper class English family. And he suffered the kind of deprived childhood that was quite typical of his time and class. He was deprived of parental love. His parents only occasionally noticed his existence and they were very formal and distant with him. It was his housekeeper, their housekeeper, Maria Malice, who offered him a really homely Christian <coughs> love, read him Christian stories and taught him prayers. And so after finishing his education at Harrow and Christ Church, Oxford, he went into Parliament as a Tory MP, as a strong Christian. During his time in Parliament, he became very involved in a number of areas, fighting for new legislation. The first was for the reform of lunacy legislation. Lunatics, as they were known in those days, were incarcerated in lunatic asylums. Here is a description of the living conditions. Patients were chained up, slept naked on straw and went to the toilet in their beds. They were left chained from Saturday afternoon until Monday morning when they were cleaned of the accumulated excrement. They were washed down in freezing cold water and one towel was allotted to 160 people with no soap. It's appalling, isn't it? Shaftesbury became very involved in working for change in the care of those who were called insane. He then went on to work on changing the conditions of child labour, especially in factories. He was pushing for a maximum of 10 working hours a day for the young boys. He also worked to outlaw the use of women and children in coal mines. And then he tried to prohibit the use of young boys as chimney sweeps. That did remind me of something. And I wonder if any of you remember the chimney sweep in Charles Kingley's Water Babies. That was one of the treasured books of my childhood. But the young boys who were sent up the chimneys to clean them suffered from a number of diseases, including cancer. In 1844, Shaftesbury became president of the Ragged School Union that promoted ragged schools, schools for poor children. He wrote that if the ragged school system were to fail, I should not die in the course of nature. I should die of a broken heart. He was an evangelical Anglican who was opposed to the Roman Catholics opposed to the Oxford movement, which promoted Catholicism in the Church of England. He was opposed to any kind of ritual in worship. He was president of the British and Foreign Bible Society from 1851 until his death in 1885. He wrote at the Bible Society, of all societies, this is the nearest to my heart. Bible Society has always been a watchword in our house. 
and he was also president of the Evangelical Alliance for some time and was an early proponent of the restoration of the Jews to the Holy Land, providing the first proposal by a major politician to resettle Jews in Palestine. It's quite a CV, isn't it? Mm. And due to his constant advocacy for the better treatment of the working classes, Shaftesbury became known as the poor man's earl. One of his biographers claimed that no man has in fact ever done more to lessen the extent of human misery or to add to the sum total of human happiness. I'm glad I looked up the story of, her, of his life. I think it's truly inspirational. And it reminds me very vividly that my gripes are very insignificant compared to the way some people had to live their lives and now have to live their lives. Because I'm not just thinking about the 1800s in Britain. We have many people in our country in the 21st century who suffer from deprivation not far removed from the conditions that Shaftesbury fought. No electricity, no running water, difficulty in accessing proper health care, women and children facing abuse, and one can go on and on. Often, I feel powerless in the face of so much suffering. I don't have the political clout of a member of parliament like Shaftesbury. But I just have to remember that I am called to do what I can to alleviate suffering. There are so many verses in the Bible reminding me of that. I'm just going to share a couple with you. Proverbs 8 verse 9. Speak up for those who cannot speak for themselves for the rights of all who are destitute. Speak up and judge fairly. Defend the rights of the poor and needy. And in Isaiah 58, verse 10. And if you spend yourselves on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the needs of the oppressed, then your light will rise in the darkness and your night will become like the moon day. James 1, verse 27. Religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress. The words of John in 1 John 3 verse 17. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother or sister in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? And finally, I'm going to read the words of Jesus in Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46. Jesus said, When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, he will sit on his throne in heavenly glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison or go to visit you? The king will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least of these brothers or sisters of mine, you did for me. Then 
he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, into the inter eternal fires prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison and you did not look after me. They also will answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, I tell you the truth, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away to eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. Those are strong words, and we shouldn't forget them. Both Christelle and Margaret spoke on Wednesday about following Jesus. Following Jesus also means looking after the poor and the needy. So ask yourself, what am I doing for the poor and the hungry and the abused? <coughs> I'm not talking about those who waste their money on drugs or alcohol. Well, they, they, they too do need help. But the many truly destitute people in this country, many of whom live in close proximity to St. Thomas. What am I doing? What are you doing? Could I do more? Could you do more? Let us pray. And I want to start by praying the collect for the Earl of Shaftesbury. Gracious Lord, you have built up your church through the love and devotion of your saints. <clears throat> Help us to follow in the steps of your servant, Anthony, Earl of Shaftesbury, and fill our hearts with love for you and others for your sake. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Let's pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil, for the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Let's share the grace with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Amen. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, all whom you love and for whom you pray, now and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord Alleluia, alleluia. In the name of Christ, <laughs> amen. Alleluia, alleluia. Goodbye, everybody. It won't be long before we see each other face to face again, and won't that be wonderful? Keep safe until then. Lots of love. Bye.